I am Ryan, setthebasetriathlon.com, and we are going to talk about the swim gear that you need to do your race. Now, you see my screen back here. I was just talking about 70.3 Oregon and the swim course. So, if you're watching this in that group, you just saw me talk about the swim course, and the swim gear, and all that other stuff, wetsuits. So, I'm going to do a quick little Facebook Live of my suggestions on swim gear that you might want to look at for doing your next races. So, if you got any questions, I can see comments in here. Just let me know. So we're going to run through them real quick. Simplicity. Um, you know, if you want to be bare bones, you could do a swim jammer or a speedo. Uh, you know, obviously gals, you need the tops, you need the bottoms. And if you just want to wear that, there are plenty of people that just do a race in speedos. And that's pretty much it. Um, you know, as long as you're covering all the, the parts that you need to cover when you're doing the swim, you could go and do that as easily as possible. You just have to be careful a little bit because usually most transitions... Um, are in, out in the open, so if you need to change or anything like that, you're going to have problems uh, because there's no public nudity in transitions because it's wide open to everybody and you can't do that. Uh, Ironman races, usually they have a changing tent because of pandemic restrictions right now. They don't have changing tents. Uh, go to a porta potty and do that. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Want to go bare bones? Speedo, you can do it. Swim cap is required in pretty much every triathlon I've ever been a part of. Uh, they just want to make sure that they can see you out there, your head bobbing and stuff, if there's a problem in the water. Plus, they kind of divvy up, you know, uh, the past race I did that was local, you know, the course distance and your gender. It was all different swim color, swim caps. You know, I think we had like six or seven different colors out there. So, swim caps, make sure you have them when you get to your race, especially Ironman 7.3s. When you check in, you get your swim caps. Any race, you get your swim caps and make sure you keep track of them. Usually, they'll have them there at the race if you forget them or something like that, but keep track of them. Goggles are a must. If you don't have goggles, um, if you ever swim in a pool and you have your eyes open underneath the water all the time and you get done by the end of the day, I remember that as a kid, you get home and your eyes are all itchy and scratchy and you're just miserable and stuff. Now, you might not have that issue, but um, you could have something pop up later um, in your eyes when you get out there and, and over the water, all kinds of stuff floating around. Um, you know, the bacteria count may be down, but you run into that one little spot that gives you a nice little friendly reminder of an eye infection or something later. So that's reason number one. Reason number two, it's just easier to see. Um, you don't get water in your eyes. You don't have to mess with it. You don't have to do anything. A nice pair of goggles. I use tinted ones. Um, use clear ones. You can have one of each just in case it's cloudy out there and you want clear goggles or anything like that. So, you know, I use uh, Zogs. I think they're going out of business or something like that. Um, you know, I use Speedo and other ones. So uh, just test a bunch. Find the ones you like. Some athletes for their swim gear, um, especially, you know, we'll talk a little bit about wetsuits later, but they wear their entire, their, their race attire, which is what I do. I have a one, usually I'm to the point where I'm a one piece long sleeve uh, tri suit. So I've got Under Armour underwear underneath, and I've got my, my base of my race kit over it, and that's what I wear. And I got my swim cops or swim cap, uh, you know, goggles, and I use the plugs. Uh, but basically, um, if you're using two piece, some people wear that. Uh, some people, you know, when I started out, I was wearing uh, bike gear, so I had a bike jersey and a pair of shorts. Well, bike jerseys are kind of loose, so you don't want that when you're swimming in the water. So I changed, and always got stuck. It just kind of problem there was the pain. Uh, but now they've come a long way, so my tops can zip down, so I can take the top off if I need to go to the bathroom or something like that. And so I basically wear my race attire the entire swim. So that's an option. Now. The other option is wetsuits and speed suits. So if it's wetsuit optional, and the USAT rules governs that for the most part, if it's wetsuit optional, you can wear a wetsuit. You can, there's sleeveless, there's full sleeve, there's all kinds of different ones. Or you can wear a, a speed suit. If it's wetsuit optional, but you want to still uh, count for age group awards, you can wear a speed suit, but it has to, it can't cover your arms and it has to stay above your knees. So, and it can't be made on a neoprene. So all your races should have this information listed in there, the athlete guides and stuff. But um, So that's, if it's what's illegal, I've got full seat suit. I've got my tri-kit underneath, and that's what I'm wearing. So I got a little information there. No sleeve, full sleeve. Or if it's wetsuit optional or it's wetsuit legal, you can wear the swim buoy shorts. Some people wear those. And if you want to wear that in a race, that's perfectly legal, as long as it's wetsuit legal. Um, if it is not wetsuit legal, then you can't wear those at all either because they're considered kind of they're man in the print, so you can't wear them. Um, I did put a little line on here. If it's cold, you may add a neoprene swim cap. 
So I have one, and usually if the water temperature is below 70, I wear my knee pretty swim cap. Just keeps my body a little bit warm. I have a tendency to get cold in, in cold water. So it's just kind of nice to have that extra layer, especially you know, if you're doing anything well, 70.3, the water temperature is like 53 degrees or something crazy. Go get that neoprene swim cap. I have one. Like I said, go to eBay. They're all over the place. Fairly affordable. It's not a problem. Um, I do use, use earplugs just because I have narrow ear canals, and every time I go to breathe, water gets stuck in my ear. So I hate it. Pain in the butt. It gives me vertigo, so I got earbuds, so I wear them all the time. Uh, swim booties. So I used them in 2013. I ran Lake Tahoe, um, and I never used them again. I just found they kind of filled up with water, and they created more of a uh, weight than actually aided in keeping my feet warm. 74.3 Indian Wells a couple years ago. Water was 53 degrees. I didn't wear anything on my feet, and there were blocks of ice. By the time I get out, I couldn't feel a thing uh, until about mm, 5, 10 miles into the bike ride. So... You know, if you want to swim, use swim booties and you found a way that works, some races will allow them. Make sure you check with the race. Sometimes they won't allow them. So it just depends on the race. Um, and then I just run through, there could be a combo of anything. You could use tri bottoms in your wetsuit. And then when you get to transition, you put on your tri top. Uh, you could put a, f a full tri suit on and then put the top around your waist and put a wetsuit on. Um, you could do that with a speed suit. Uh, I know with a speed suit, I wear my long sleeve tri suit, so sometimes the sleeves get probably not the most uh, fluid, dynamically uh, uh, less drag situation. There's probably drag in the sleeves and stuff. And probably could do a little bit better, but that's just what I use, so whatever, that's what I go with. So that being said, find something that works for you, something that's comfortable. Usually gloves are prohibited. There may be extenuating circumstances. I know people with like Rinald syndrome where your hands get like really cold and they start turning colors because they're losing circulation because they're so cold. Now, if you reach out to a race director and kind of set something up, they may allow it or may not. So always check into it, you know, always ask a question and see if it's something that's an option. Uh, for the swim, you need that tie you chip. Strap it on your ankle and make sure it's on their tie because people will grab your feet during the swim. And the last thing you want to do is lose your time and chip in the water and the race starts and then have that anxiety and stress and you come out of water. Time and chip, got to have it. Now here's a, uh, the, the secret sauce to the swim, to coming out and not being rubbed raw by your wetsuit, by your zippers on your suits or anything like that, is I use Tri-Slide in a spray bottle. I just lube up around my neck and back of my neck and, and just make sure everything's on right and hey, take that off of there. We don't need to see any Facebook comments, but I use that tri slide to make sure that I reduce any kind of friction or anything like that. Just to make sure that I don't get rubbed raw so later, and especially in longer races and you, know, you don't sweat on it. You don't get sunscreen on it, you burn and that problem later. And after the race, you take a shower and you get burned because you have raw spots all over. So just take care of the, the sensitive parts there with a little tri slide or something. Um, and then GPS watch, I use my watch to record the entire race. I don't use it by computer. I use, I've got the Phoenix 6. So I, from start to finish, I'm using my, my watch to record the whole thing. So it's synced up to all my, um, my, my pedals, my power pedals, it's synced up to my cadence meter and everything on my bike. And it's synced up if I've got the run pod or anything like that, if I use that during the run. So I use my watch the entire time. So basically just kind of ran through. I didn't see any comments or questions about that kind of stuff. So if you got questions, put them in the comments. If you see this video on YouTube, put the uh, question in there. I'm always getting back and answering any questions you got. So that is kind of wrapping it up on what I would recommend for swim gear. Um, like I said, I publish this as a tip in one of my Facebook groups, but I also do the Facebook Lives to kind of grab some attention so you guys are aware. So if you're out there and you're wondering, what do I wear on the swim? What, what, what are my options? This kind of runs you through kind of the high-level stuff. So if you got any questions, put them in there. Happy training. We'll see you on race day.